going on Dolphins? Your boy Dylan and uh, so I got a, a couple things I'm gonna talk to you about today. Um, by the way, welcome to Dolphins with Dylan. It's another episode. Yay. We're all excited. Also too, before I actually get into, you know, team stuff, I want to let you guys know that, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I just started classes today, so my schedule's getting a little bit more busy, and, um, you know, so I'm gonna try and make sure I get my videos, you know, out to you promptly, um, you know, and, and, and what have you. Um, so a couple quick things uh, that I just wanted to talk about um, today that I thought was kind of interesting, just some news, news and notes, and then uh, Adam Gase also had a press conference today, so I'll give you that as well. So first is there's this article from Bleacher Report, and it's about uh, Teddy Bridgewater and the odds that he's going to end up on, or, or what team he's going to end up on, and apparently we are the most likely team. So it says Teddy Bridgewater's strong preseason performance has made him a hot target or trade. Co excuse me, trade commodity heading into the NFL regular season. Per Odd Shark, a trio of AFC East teams are among the top contenders that have the New York Jets quarterback on their roster by the time the NFL's trade deadline passes on October 30th. Uh, and according to Odd Shark, we have a plus 225, uh, which is the, um, I guess, the, the highest, the best, the, the best odds to land him and then the Jags come in at 275, Patriots at 300, Broncos at 450, and Jets at plus 700. Uh, among the list of favorites for Bridgewater, the Jacksonville, ja Jacksonville Jaguars made it to the AFC Championship game last year with Blake Bortles as their starting quarterback. The New England Patriots are looking for a backup who can potentially take over for Tom Brady if he decides to retire in the near future. Per Armando Salguero of the Miami Herald, there was mutual interest between Bridgewater and the Miami Dolphins before the team heard uh, he was seeking a contract worth $15 million for one year. Uh, the Denver Broncos did sign Case Keenum during the offseason, but he only received a two-year deal. The Jets are the only team on the list with a potential long-term answer at quarterback after selecting Sam Darnold. Uh, so it's, there's a little bit more, but it's kind of not really important. So basically, you know, I guess we're the, the most likely team to try and trade for him. Um, you know, I, I honestly think that, I, I you know, I mean, I agree with people that the backup quarterback position's not, you know, in the greatest position right now i think i have said for a while i think it'll end up being david fails but i wouldn't hate bringing in bridgewater if you know as long as we don't have to give up a lot for him or you know whatever um but you know as far as i'm concerned the backup quarterback quarterback position is not something we're going to need to address this year i know everybody's all concerned because Tannehill is coming off a knee injury blah 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 but Tannehill's going to make every game this year. He's going to be stellar. He's going to be our quarterback going into next year and the year after that and so on and so forth. So, you know, I don't really... That's what I see. That's how I see it. That's how I feel about it. So, you know, honestly, I think we could probably get, you know, a good developmental quarterback in next year's draft and maybe the second or third round or something and be good to go and not have to worry about it. So that's actually going to be everything that I have for you today. It was just a, that one thing was kind of interesting. Um, and I, I wanted to just talk about it a little bit. Um, so there's definitely some, you know, some other stuff, some more information coming out of Gase's press conference. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and attach that on to the end of, you know, this in, into my video. So that way you guys can actually see what he had to say. Um, and with that, Make sure you guys subscribe, share it with your friends, hit the like button, leave any comments or questions for me if you like, and enjoy the interview. I'll see you guys soon. Say otherwise. Adam, all Robert Quinn that seems to do is make plays. Um, how much has he played in the preseason, and, and is the intrigue what he can do over a 60-minute game? You know, he's been in there almost every snap with the one, you know that first group. I know this. I'm I'm really glad that we made that trade. You know, that was kind of you know they approached us, and Mike and Chris acted quickly, and they found a way to get it done. And ever since he's been here, I th you know, he's just been so consistent 
with everything he's done, he practices the way he plays in games. Like, there's no change. He's harassing the quarterback all the time. And, you know, it's just when you, we've, I've personally faced him quite a bit between Denver and Chicago, and he was, he was a nightmare to deal with. And just being on the same side as him, this, it's a good feeling because you know it's just a matter of time where he's going to make a play. I mean, he's disruptive. I mean, it's just consistent. You just feel him. When you're playing quarterback, you can feel him coming all the time. Was, was he on your radar before L.A. approached you guys, or was it kind of just a shock? That oh, I mean, it was just one of those things. Where they, were, they were making some changes with, you know, the, you know, that defensive roster with Robert and Ogletree getting traded. I mean, we, I think we were just surprised. It was an opportunity for us, and good thing was Mike and Chris didn't hesitate. Adam, the receivers competing potentially for one job with Isaiah Leonte before his injury, Rayshon, Owosu, et cetera. Any stand out to you as of, as you look at the whole body of work? You know, I, this last game, I, you know, after once we hit that second half, we didn't have a whole bunch of guys on offense, especially play real well. And, you know, we, I mean, right now, if, you know, if we're going to be doing anything with guys competing for that, whatever spot it would be, you know, it's everything's wide open right now. Are there any injured players who you uh, believe or know will return this week? No, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. You know, I'm hoping that we get Carew back. You know, I, the way that everybody was talking going into the last game that we thought we would, but until we kind of get going and see how he feels, then I really won't know. And probably tomorrow I'll, I'll have a better idea. What's your level of confidence in Devontae for week one? I don't know. I haven't even gotten that far. I mean, I'll worry about that when that's that's that week. I guess that's the way. How is he? What, what, how's his progress? He's getting yeah. better. He still can't catch a ball. Adam, with, um, with what Drake is showing as a receiver in addition to running the ball, how valuable is that as a, from a play calling perspective to have your main guy that's a threat in both areas? It's difficult for the defense because especially when you have a tight end and a running back that are a threat outside. Now the defense, if they want to play any kind of man coverage, they have to decide who do they want to put on those players. So there's going to be a linebacker on one and a safety on the other. So Drake on a linebacker, I like that matchup. If they want to put a linebacker on Gusecki, I like that matchup. So it just puts the defense in a bind, and you start seeing less cover one because they don't want to get that matchup, and now you get a lot of zone, which softer coverage, which makes it better for our receivers. Have you figured out what is the right touch amount for Drake in terms of catches and, and runs? I know you always believe in a two-back system, but do you have a good number in there? I have an idea, but I think every game is going to be different. You know, it's just it really comes down to the amount of plays in a game. You know, where in the past, the last two years, we haven't had the amount of plays we need. You'd love to get in that 70, 75 plays per game as a, as a unit. And if that happens, then you're looking at, you know, hopefully anywhere from 15 to 20 carries and 68 targets. But that's if you're on the high end of plays per game. If you're lower plays per game, then you're looking at less, less attempts, which that's why it's for us, it's all about third down conversions, maybe first down, second down, first down, and keep us on the field, you know, longer drives. And that's going to give us opportunities to get our, the ball in his hand more. And then now him and Frank kind of can, you know, work that thing together. Edward, depending on how you want to define the term big play, you could say Drake has made big plays, Quinn, Xavier, Vince Taylor with the block uh, field goal, Gotshaw, I guess, on the extra point, uh, point conversion. Um, um, Danny Amendola on a third and ten, but uh, how do you define big play, and is this a big play team? You guys all right back there? <laughs> well, you can you can look at it as you can look at it yardage wise. You know, I know a lot of teams probably look at it as hey, ten yards on a run play, twenty yards on a on a pass play is an explosive play. You know. Danny's play is probably a good example of you have third and ten and he catches the ball under the sticks, makes a guy miss, scores a touchdown. And and really at the, to me, sometimes you look at it, what's field position field position changing type play and what sustains a drive. And I think a lot of those times when you have those third and longer situations and you steal one, mm -hmm. that's a big play. Because the defense is expecting if it's third and seven plus, percentages say they should win. And 
you get conversions on those down and distances, that's those are those are the type of plays that swing the game. Is this a big play team? Do you think? Are you guys a big play team when you take all three? I think we can be when we when we do things the right way and we we execute the right way, we get rid of the ball, we hand the ball off and, and block things well. I think there's there's opportunities there. What's prevented like Leonte Crew from being what you guys expect him to be to this point? I think really for him a lot of times it's been just the consistency. You know, like when he has opportunities, just take advantage of it. When you when you end up starting a game, which has happened a few times in the last couple of years, how are you going to impact the game? Whether it might not be catching the ball, it might be blocking, it might be doing your doing your job right to where you spring somebody else free. Just the little tiny details of of being a, a complete wide receiver and you know, sometimes when you're a younger player, it doesn't always go as smooth as you want it to go. It's not college to where you can make an impact right away. Not everybody gets to do that. And some of the injuries of just the minor, you know, getting banged up sometimes have have hurt him in, you know, critical situations to where he's competing for a job. He has a, a little setback on an injury. You know, that's, that's tough for him because he knows every rep for him matters. You know, every time he has a chance to play a game, it matters. And you know, miss it a game. I mean, it's. I can't sit here and go, well, it's his fault. I mean, it's just kind of luck of the draw. Sometimes, you know, it's. Are you available for a game? I mean, that's one of the key things in this league. Are you available? Has he gone about it urgently? This yes. Yeah, he been yes. Well I will. I, he has done that. The last two years have been. He has been outstanding as far as his sense of urgency has been exactly what we want. You know, we just. The more we can get him on the field, and the more opportunities we can give him, that gives him a better chance. Is it safe to assume that the starters won't play in the fourth preseason game, and that they've played well enough that it doesn't necessitate? Uh, we're, there might, there are probably going to be some guys that play, some guys, some guys we end up sitting. I think everybody's got a different situation. I, I don't know if we're going to look at it as this group's not playing. I think everybody's just, every guy's going to be treated different. With, with the offensive line, the second unit, did you identify what went wrong there? What were the issues? Yeah, we we didn't block them. I mean, it's it's we didn't do a good job of executing some of our protections, and which snowballs real fast because the quarterback had no chance, and it was a little disappointing because that group has been at least good enough with knowing who we're who we're going to, what we're doing, and we we just really. We tightened up a little bit, and that's it was disappointing to see. Did you get any feedback from uh, Gore on the number of snaps he got? I, I heard about it during the game that he wasn't real happy. <laughs> but I, when we kept going, you know, we're, we go three and out, and then I'm kind of going, all right, you got a catch. So, like, does this count? Like, he has a carry and a catch. Do it, can I move? Can I get him out of the game? And he wanted to go back in there and. We had him go back in there, and then we, Eric's like, I took him out, so, which was smart. I mean, we both talked about it. Really, our goal was to get him a carry. If he got a catch, we were going to be excited about that. Then we wanted him out of the game. I mean, he's had enough hits over his career. I'm pretty sure everybody in this room has seen enough football from him to know, but he's such a competitor. I mean, I even heard him say after the game, he's talking to somebody else. He's like, I didn't even play. I didn't even play. You know, so, I mean, he, he loves being out there, and that's what all of us love about him. Is the guy loves football. He everything about it from practice to games to meetings, the how engaged he is, the amount of time he's here, it's it's awesome to see. How is watching Bobby McCain at outside corner in the last two preseason games, as well as all those practices, affected you and the rest of the coaching staff's staff's comfort with that arrangement? I think we're all we all feel really good about it. Because we know Bobby when if Bobby ever makes a mistake that's it. You're not, you're not going to see that same mistake again. He, he is a very quick learner, and he's a competitor, which a lot of times at that position, who's the guys that will compete for 60 minutes, and who are the guys that can forget about the bad thing that happened to you? Because if you play corner in this league, you will get beat. At some point, you're going to get beat, and the, the best ones can recover. They go out the next one, and they jump right in the guy's face and says, try to do it again. That's, that's what we want. You and the staff have reminded him of, like, if okay, you're going to do this, we want you to keep this in mind. No, Bobby's Bobby's 
Bobby's a self-starter. He is a kind of guy that you don't have to tell much to. Give him the details of what his job are and let him play. How do you feel? Any update on Jakeem Grant No, I don't. I have no, no update on him yet. And I mean, you have a decision. I didn't. And everywhere else, obviously. <laughs> How has Derby looked since the foot injury? He's, he's been good. good. He's had, he's he's had good practices, which that was really the number one thing I, I was looking for. You know, the in the. We we got a little, we got caught in a little bit more probably eleven personnel than really we anticipated going into this last game, um, so he he didn't get as many snaps as we really wanted, but I have a really good comfort level of where he's at right now. I, I know you're you're thrilled to get questions about kickers, but uh, you, you guys threw us a curveball last year with the with the party signing. So I want to know your thoughts on how those two rookies have done, and if you have a level of confidence for them if we won. Yes. So fact, you, you, you'd be fine going into the season with one of those two as your kicker? Yes. For the backup quarterback situation, could you see yourself possibly keeping three or? Four. Huh? Sure. Keep as many as we can. But with the roster configurations, can you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll figure all that out when the time comes. I mean, we still got another game. I want to see those guys go out there, execute what we're asking them to do, compete. And then we'll figure that out the next week. I just want to respect the guys that are playing in this game that are fighting for jobs. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself on that. I'm curious how dramatic the Atlanta game is going to be with those two quarterbacks, with yeah. Osweiler and Fails. Is this, are they close enough that this is like almost a winner take all situation for them? I don't know if I'm looking at it like that. I'm, I mean, we, we haven't even really said this is how many we're keeping. I mean, if we keep three, it's just then those two guys just keep battling it out for. However long we go, if we make a decision, we say we're going to keep two, then it doesn't really matter if it was this game that was winner or take all. I mean, we're going to look at all the information and we're going to keep talking through this. And I just want those guys to focus on what they're trying to do right now, which is get ready for Atlanta. And we'll figure all that out next week. And regarding the starting five offensive linemen, are there clear indicators to you that they are growing together, whether it's communication, uh, um, you know, subtle signs that as five, they're becoming one. Yeah, I mean, I just look at the fact that the quarterback doesn't get touched a whole bunch. I mean, he's back there and he has the opportunity to, to go through a progression and you don't see free runners going through a whole bunch. I do think there has been growth since we started. I, I really think the left side between Josh and Laramie, I've, there's a real great comfort level there. I think we've... Had had a couple up and ups, up and downs early in training camp with with Jesse and Juwan. I think that's getting better. I think those two guys are doing a good job of working through any kind of issues they've had with whether it be pressures or stunts and things like that, to where they're getting on the same page. And those guys are working well. And I think Dan's doing a good job of of running the show up there. And I like where that group is. I I feel comfortable with those guys. I feel like they're they do a great job in the run game. I I really do think that's going to be something that's going to be our, a strength of ours this year. And what just helps us when we get in third down, there's there's not going to be any hesitation by me to say, hey, if it's those five guys and they have to protect and we got a hold on the ball, we're going to be all right. What's your comfort level when, uh, in Lipman and the Tankers League at this point? I think we just are always going to be looking for that consistency. You know, and, and right now, like with Tony, I just want to give him as many reps as we possibly can between tomorrow's practice and that game and just – have them just turn it loose and just just keep playing, you know, the way we want them to play, the way we've seen them play in the past. You know, I know that injury is one of the one of the worst kind of injuries you can have for that position because it's going to affect change of direction, speed, you know, just confidence sometimes. And you know, last game kind of getting him going a little bit, and hopefully we can give him a lot more reps this game. And both those guys just let them go out there and play and. My biggest thing is going to be let's let's let those guys press and get their hands on receivers and see where we're at. Adam Vincent Taylor seems to flash. Um, what have you noticed about him this camp, and where is he as far as the D tackle rotation? As soon as you put pads on, he's he seems to show up. You know, he's the kind of guy that he's just a he's an old school football player, man. He does a great job when when it gets physical. I think he enjoys that, and he's got a knack for getting his hands on kicks. And that's that's there's a lot of value in that. That's that's a that's to me that's a, that's a turnover for you because you're getting great field position, you're preventing points. 
mean, that's that's something that can help us. Well, firing Kendall Langford, any reflection of your confidence in Vince? Uh, that it wasn't really had anything to do with that. We were always trying to add add depth and competition, and you know, when we worked all those guys out, he was our he was our best guy that was at that workout, and I think his his history here and what people feel about him in the building and, and the confidence guys had to, for him to be able to come in and just jump right in and and really compete that was that was something that i think is hard to find at that point in camp players on that that d line is that a position you feel like you can go heavy in yeah i mean we'll figure that out here after this game's over but i mean it seems like that's it's worked out that way in the past but we'll just kind of see how so everything shakes out. Chase Allen has to run with the first team. But can you explain what that was about? I and mean, we're always going to be moving guys in. You know, we, we got him playing a couple different positions. So we're just trying to make sure that he's settled in at, at multiple spots. And, you know, that's really, we're always, defensive guys are always doing a good job putting pressure on the guy that might be starting a game and just make sure everybody, if something happens in a real game, Guys got to be ready to step in and play with a different group of guys that they may not practice with all the time. And, you know, we, we want to do that more on offense to where all of a sudden you throw a backup quarterback in there and Ryan gets pulled out and those guys got to be ready to go and it can't be a huge change. The same thing, sometimes you, you start bumping linemen in there that were maybe on the second team to the first team and just mix that line up so the quarterback has to get used to how does this work out. And then those guys have to understand, like, the intensity can't change. It can't, it can't have a huge drop off. That's just not an option. So sometimes we do things like that just to make sure that guys are used to playing with each other and, and there's a sense of urgency by the guy that fills in. Last question. With uh, Jordan Phillips, how would you assess what he did in, in, that, in that game against Ravens? I think he made some impact plays. There was a couple things that, you know, we need to, we need to clean up. You know, after we, we watched that, a couple of things on special teams that he was involved in, we'd like to, to actually do a little better. And I do think that it was good to see him be in the right spot and be able to – there was one, one, of the, one of the sacks, just by him doing his job, he ends up getting a sack. It's not really meant for him. And that was, that's good to, good to see because all the little details, that matters. You know, when you when you, when you work as a unit up there with the linebackers, that's when you have success. And when we got those guys really humming, is when they're all trying to do do their job and they're all on the same page. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, and as always, if you did, please hit the subscribe button. You know, share it with your friends. Post on Facebook. You know, whatever. Hit the like button and definitely leave me some comments questions, concerns, anything you'd like to see or hear in the videos, um, you know, stuff like that. So definitely let me know. And of course, the most important thing is subscribe. Uh, so with that said, I'll see you guys soon and fins up.